During a recent trip to the Mediterranean, we had the opportunity to sample the flavors of Spain and Portugal. Olives, grilled vegetables, white asparagus, fresh sardines, mushrooms, toasted bread topped with pureed garlic and tomatoes. Is your mouth watering yet? These are just a few of the typical foods from this exotic land by the sea. The sun, the blue sea, the temperate climate, the people and the fresh food all inspire healthy living. Welcome to Memorial Cooking Innovation. I'm Chef Manny Marini. And I'm Tim Scallon, registered dietitian. You know what, Tim? I'm glad you said Spain. I know you just got back from vacation. I saw those wonderful pictures that you brought. Yeah. And I thought, I bet when Tim gets back, we're going to cook Spain. Well, you know, while I, while I was there, I was thinking, you know, what would Chef Manny think about this? And so it. But let me tell you something. Okay. Did you use that thought that I always give you? Taste those flavors. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. It's it's great, isn't it? In fact, this gazpacho. So I came back and and now I have to tell you, for, for those who don't know about gazpacho, it's a cold tomato soup. Okay. Now I've never been one for cold soups, uh, but when you're in Madrid and you taste this crisp, cool, delicious, it is wonderful, soup, isn't it? It is. I mean, it'll make a believer out. It of doesn't it. sound good, but. You got to try it. It's Just try incredible. it once and you'll see you'll like it. I think it's a cucumber. I think it's a cucumber that makes it so clean and crisp. Excellent. So, so we're going to we're going to do that. Yeah. So okay, so so uh, so so I, we came back and I had to talk to Chef Manny about this and and so I got this recipe and and started uh, uh, adapting it and I I started doing the same things that you've taught us to do on the show. Which is? Well, you know how you always start with some olive oil. Where's your olive oil? I got it right over here. You always start with some olive oil, and then you add the onions, and you tell us to sweat the onions, and, you know, that releases the flavor. That's what you've taught us. And so... And just a little bit of olive oil. That's all you need. Yeah. Yeah, and so... I got the onions already cut up, Tim, so this time. So, in, in this recipe, uh, this is kind of an adaptation. This isn't what you would normally see in a... In, or at least I didn't find this in any other gazpacho recipe. Uh, so I sweated the onions, I added the garlic, and in this recipe, we're not going to saute the cucumber and the tomato. No, we don't want to do that. Mm -mm. No, we're, gonna, we're, we're just going to release the flavor of these onions and this garlic, and then uh, add that to our food processor. Beautiful. Then we're going to chop our tomatoes and our cucumber, seed the cucumber, and then the chopped uh, cold vegetables... We're going to take these onions that we've pureed, add the tomato cucumber, pulse it a little bit, put it back into the pan where you've taught us if you've started flavor in the pan, don't don't wash that away. Don't wash it away. Yeah. And I'm glad you I'm glad you uh, learned from that one. Mm -hmm. And let me tell y'all, the reason we're doing this gazpacho was because he was so amazed of the soup. Yeah. Yeah. It was. And then Tim came back and said, "Hey, we got to do this soup. This yeah. is summertime." Yeah. We're Good hitting time. 100 degrees. We're yep. hitting, you know, those. there's yep. nothing better than something like that for a night, uh, just a snack. Well, or even like an appetizer. An appetizer like, would you know, be you're, great. You're serving dinner to someone, and this is a great thing to start the meal with. Good. So we're sweating. That smells good already. That smells wonderful. Garlic okay. and onions smells okay, great. Okay, you ready for that to go in here? Sure. Okay, let me give you the bowl here. Let me get my spoon real quick. Okay. So we'll do this. That is so good. It smells wonderful. Beautiful. Okay. All right. All right. Now let's go ahead and chop our uh, tomatoes and cucumbers. I got the. I got it already diced up. Okay. okay. I got your your tomatoes here. I got your. Okay. You've already peppers. got tomatoes yeah. ready. Okay. So we can and add I'm up, tomatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and peel the cucumber. Make sure okay. we wash them really good. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna add tomatoes. Did you plan for me to use both of these? I sure, I sure did. Okay. All right. Now, if your uh, food processor doesn't hold it all, you know, just just uh, pulse more than one batch at a time. All right. And on most pr food processors, you've got a you've got an on and you've got a pulse. And this, you just want to pulse 
just to, because it doesn't need to be real fine. It no, we be, don't want to puree it. Yeah, it needs to have a little bit of texture to it. You still, you want to get all the chunks out, but you want it to have some texture. So I'm just going to hit this a couple of times. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just looking at it and getting it to the texture that I want. Consistency that you want, perfect. And, yeah, and sometimes when you're, when you're using a, when you've got a full bowl on your processor, you have to make sure that you get all the, the big pieces that float to the top. You want them to come down to the bottom. Make sure they get chopped up too. Boy, this smells wonderful. We're gonna add so we're just going to saute it very little. Mm -hmm. Low heat. Yeah. Yeah. Because on this one, once you get your all your vegetables uh, pulsed in the food processor, then we're going to simmer them gently. And this is one of the things you've taught us to blend the flavors. Blend the flavors. Now here again, this isn't a traditional uh, gazpacho recipe. You know, the, all the recipes that we looked at, it didn't say to cook it. it you, you just uh, you, you blend you it all together. Just blend all the flavors together and then put chill it in the fridge. It. Yeah. yeah, we don't want to overcook it. So okay. Perfect. Now I, when in when I uh, started this recipe, do you have a smaller knife? I sure do. I wanted to show you because this recipe calls for a. Uh, for seeded, Seedless. Yeah, seeded, seeded yeah. cucumber. And so I wanted to show you, that, you know, you've always taught us to cut it in half like you've done. And, and then you normally would say put the, I'm going to make this a little bit easier to handle. Sure. And so what I did is I cut down the middle like this, and then I did it like this. Now, is that how the Chef Manny would have done it? That was going to be the question you I know, was going to ask that's you. That's not a bad thing. You but see, I'll be so honest with you. Tell me and, how. And, I would keep would the do. seeds. You okay? Tell me. Tell me. What is more important about what is so important about those seeds? Besides well, it's interesting you'd say that. I know right where you're going. You know, because we always talk about uh, there's a lot of nutrients in seeds. In seeds, and that's true. For and, and, cucumbers. and you know, there is there is some people that don't like the seeds, or maybe yeah. you know, it's just you could do it both ways. Well, and on this cucumber, and it's a good point to make. On this cucumber, it doesn't really have very many seeds. And they're not too hard. They're, or, they're yeah. kind of soft. So. Sometimes a cucumber, and I see this one, you can see a few of the seeds in there. And, you know, I'm kind of like you. I wouldn't really find that objectionable. But some cucumbers, the seeds are a lot bigger and more. Maybe it's the cucumber. So we can do it both ways. You, you could do it. It's really a personal preference. Beautiful. So you can now, see the cucumber. The way I would do it. Yeah, show me. Grab oh, a spoon and okay. just go straight down the middle of it. See, I knew that he would have an easier way to do this. Something like that. Yeah, see, that was a lot okay. easier than what and I And then, thought. so we're going to stick this in the food processor, yep. right, Tim? Yep. You know, a food processor is one of those things that you need it when you need it. You know, a lot of times we don't use this because we tend to like texture in food. But, but on this dish, it works good to have a food processor. Let's see if we've got this the way we want it. I think that looks pretty good, Tim. You like it? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, if the chef says it's now, good, sometimes it's good. you want it, you know, kind of crunchy, mm -hmm. uh, thick. You know, it depends on what you like. Okay. If you want it more puree, that's up to you. Yeah. But I think this is a great. Well, and also this recipe is forgiving because uh, you're going to cook this anyway. You know, you're going to simmer it a little bit. Just, Just to bring out each flavor. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we got onions, we got tomatoes, we got a little bit of garlic. Yep. What else, Tim? Okay, then we want, uh, let's see, we need green bell pepper. Uh, oh, well, that needs to go in here, huh? Mm hmm. And then we need fresh basil, fresh parsley. Now, those can go, those don't have to be pulsed. No, nope, they can you be know, just chopped and Exactly. Added I'll to do the that. Soup. Okay. Let me separate that real quick. And I got some nice basil here. So let me just get these peppers pulsed a little bit. That's good, Tim. Okay. Here, I am going to go ahead and chop the basil. Okay. Nice, fine chop. All right, good. Again, when, it, when we're making the soup like this, it's best to add a little bit at a time and taste it as we go. That's a good tip. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you don't want to add too much basil. You don't want to add too much yeah. onions. You don't want to, you know, so just as you go, take your time. You'll be very proud of what comes out of it. 
Well, and you, and that's also something that you've taught us is, you know, this was this is something that I think amateur cooks like myself, especially when we're just getting started cooking, uh, we tend to not taste. We tend right. to just go by the recipe and it comes mm -hmm. out if it comes out. But what you've taught us is is it really is more of an art. And and you use the recipe as a guide, but you also have to trust your taste buds. Well, that thyme smells good, doesn't it? Fresh thyme, yes. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have fresh thyme, go ahead and use the dry thyme. Easiest that, thing in the world to grow in, in a, just a little pot. Thyme. Yes. Loves this hot weather. You should keep it watered. Good. And then the recipe calls for a little bit of low sodium. Tomato juice. Tomato juice. Yep. And I got some right here, okay? And this is just going to add some liquid. Yeah, this is what we want. This is going to be your, basically your base, your soup-like mm -hmm. consistency. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, this is and sure then we add good. a little bit of red wine vinegar. Yeah. Now, can we use other vinegars? Yeah. Yes. Yes, you yes. can. We, we chose this just because it's red, and, and you know, whereas the balsamic has a real distinct flavor. Yeah. This is I mean, you could do red or just regular salad white vinegar. White vinegar, yeah. Okay. White wine vinegar, yeah. So that would be good. So we're going to put mm -hmm. a little bit. We'll come back and taste it. Yeah. And if we need to add a little bit more, we'll add a little bit more. Yeah. You notice in this recipe there's just a little bit of sugar. And that's a pinch. Yeah, and that's because that's The acidity gonna, of the tomato. Mm -hmm, and the vinegar. Yeah, exactly. it's, so, it's going to smooth it out. In fact, I started, when I was, when I was cooking this at home, uh, I thought, well, I'm just going to leave that sugar out. Do we really need white sugar in this? A pinch of pepper. But it does. It, it, it does need that little pinch of sugar. It does. It, it smooths it out. Isn't this beautiful? Okay, let me taste. And this is important. Always taste it because add a little bit at a time, mm -hmm. and then you can add more. Say, so you know what? Mm. It needs a bite. It needs a little bit of this. It meets, needs a little more of this. I taste the time. Well, I think we got it, Tim. I think you got it right there. I, I wouldn't change a thing. I wasn't going to say that because I wanted to see what you Yeah, say. I think we got it, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. I'll take that one. <laughs> That's perfect. perfect. So. Yeah. Now you we've know, got all the flavors on You know, when he does this, I don't know how he does it, but he's got it right every time. I have to taste and try Actually, it. I want to tell everybody today, today <laughs> one of the cooks came by and yeah. said, taste this, and I said, no, give it to Tim and let Tim know, <laughs> let you know what's in it, yeah. and, and you hit it. We're, we're in the kitchen, and, 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 and he's taught me to taste for flavors, and, and I, I did pretty good. I didn't get everything, You'd, but I No, I you, but good. you got about 90% of it, yeah, right? Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. So what do you think? Good? I think it's perfect. Let's, now let's we're going to put it in a bowl. Yep. Okay? We're going to put in a nice bowl, and then we're just going to put it in the refrigerator, let it cool yep. down a little bit, yep. okay? Chill it for two hours, and, Re uh, ready and, it, to serve. and it, it'll be ready to serve. And the good thing about this, it didn't take long. Oh, no. It was a lot of fun. You saw how this went together. So and, there's two. let me show you two ways of chilling this real quick. One. Okay. Put some ice underneath and oh. just stir it around real fast, you yeah. know, just keep yeah. it. Or let it sit for just a few minutes and then we'll throw it in the refrigerator and let it chill and we'll work on our on next it. entree. Okay. How's that? Okay, that sounds good. Beautiful. All so, right. we're going to do that. So, Tim, now that we got it in the refrigerator, yeah. what about the paella? Let's do the paella. All right. Okay. So, the paella recalls for a little bit of olive oil, right? It's going to start the same way. Exactly. A little bit of olive oil. <clears throat> we'll do this. Yeah. And then I have a little bit of onions. We're going to sweat the onions to get some flavor. If you don't mind, yep. put it there. You want all these, huh? Sure. Okay. Onions always so good. Very healthy, healthy, healthy vegetable. That's beautiful. You know, we always talk about the color of vegetables indicating uh, nutritional content. Well, this is one of those exceptions to the rule because although there's no color, onions are extremely healthy. Anthocyanins, very good beautiful. for us. Now, a little onions, a little garlic, a little garlic, if you don't mind. Okay. And this is one of those entrees that are uh, cuisines that you have to add the garlic. You know, you, you know, you know me. You know yes, me. Yes, you always right? add okay. the garlic last. But yeah. This so one. we're gonna saute this. Yeah. All right. Now, the co the recipe calls for some pork. Yeah. Now, get a nice lean pork chop, maybe a center cut. Mm -hmm. Okay, less fat, mm -hmm. and that's what I got yeah. now. Or it Which could is, be pork loin. It could be a nice, beautiful pork loin. Yep. So I yep. got a nice pork loin. We're going to trim the little bit of the fat. Yep. All right. We're just going to julienne this real quick or just yep. kind of bite size. Okay. okay. If you don't mind. All right. I'm going to do that. I think one will be enough I for me and you, huh? For what us. do you think? Yeah. 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 We want to do yeah. that. And, you know, a paella is a, it's a dish 
in some ways it's kind of like uh, uh, Louisiana gumbo. You know, everybody makes their gumbo a little bit differently. Well, I'm that's, glad you said that. Yeah, yeah. that's true in, in Spain for their paella. Everybody like, makes their paella just a little different, and there, there are different kinds of paellas. Uh, typically, uh, it's a multi-meat dish with rice and vegetables. But uh, you can use seafood. You, you see a lot of seafood. In well, most of the paella is actually made with seafood. Yeah. You know, but I'm glad you said that because you're, you're right. A lot of paella could be a vegetable paella. Yeah. In fact, that's what we had in Spain. It was delicious. Beautiful. It didn't have any meat. Uh, so, but, you know, I also saw a lot of uh, mixed meat paellas, just like this one. You know, just you, like this. You've got chicken, pork, and I believe at the end you're going to add some shrimp to this, huh? I am. And, and so in that way, this is a very uh, traditional paella, the way, the way we're putting this together. So we're going to go ahead and add our pork, okay? Okay. Yeah. I am going to cut the, ch the chicken again, just like the pork. Mm -hmm. Now, the pork takes a little longer to cook. So that's why that's you're why giving we this a little time okay. before you add your chicken. And, of course, also another thing you've taught us is... is uh, a lean meat like this, when it's lean, it, if you overcook it, it's going to dry out. It's going to dry out. So. so, so you don't want to. You just. You really. The goal in this step is not to cook it all the way through. You're really just kind of. You want to keep it moist. Yeah. But yeah. you, you want to keep it safe. Because we're going to add rice and liquid to this, and and as that It'll rice is up. cooking. Yep. Yeah. So you see, Tim, nice golden brown. Yep. Yep. I see think it? we're okay. ready for some mushrooms. Well, let's add some mushrooms. Okay, now how many of these? You know what? Mushrooms are always good for they, you, right, Tim? Yeah, yeah okay. they're always good. Right. So and, and I like they, mushrooms. Well, and they go good in this dish, too. Exactly. You want some little peppers? peppers? Yeah, right. I got some red peppers, too. Now, if okay. we don't happen to have red, you know, peppers and we have to, canned peppers, go yeah. ahead and use them. Yep. You know, use what you can, okay? I got okay. some peppers here. And there again, paella is a, it is a mixed dish. So, so what you're looking for in this dish is color. Color. And we okay. got plenty of it. Yeah. Yeah. And the good thing about it, it's all nutritional. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And now you want some, uh, you're going to want some brown rice here in a bit. Yeah. Let me uh, stir this around a little bit. Yeah. Let him keep cooking. Mix up real good so we'll get nice color. Yeah. Okay. Let me talk to you about rice. All right. Two Tell to one. Me. Two to one. Okay. Two to one. Okay. So if I have a cup of rice here, if I'm, it doesn't matter what you use. Yeah. But always make sure that you put two waters to one of the rice. Okay. okay? On and, this case, we're going to do chicken broth, right? Yeah, and and you so know, I got one. And you know, that's a uh, the the traditional way that we all here in East Texas learned to cook rice was to double the liquid to the rice, just what you just said, and then uh, add, pour it all together, uh, br bring it to a boil, turn it down. Simmer it for 14 minutes. Isn't that the way you always learn? And what are we doing now? Well, this is a different method. This is kind of like this a is, faster, quicker way to cook rice. This is something that I didn't know how to do until I started working with you. And so in this method, you don't add the liquid and the rice together. You saute the rice for about a minute. And what that does is, is it, it, it breaks down the outside of the rice. And it, on this brown rice, it, it cuts it's down on the better. cooking time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and keeping all the nutrition in there, mm -hmm. nutritional in there. So. You know, on brown rice, uh, as opposed to white, uh, if you cook it the traditional way, where the, the double the liquid and cook it, you know, white rice, that's usually 14 minutes. For brown rice, it's 45 minutes. It takes longer to cook that hull that's on the rice. But when you do this, you can shave 10 to 15 minutes of that uh, time off. Because we're actually helping it cook inside so it'll open up fast. Yep, that's right. So we want to. And, and, and how long do you do it? Just, you know, leave it there for a few minutes. Don't mm -hmm. let it burn. Of yep. course, it will yep. burn. But yep. just stir. Stir a little bit yep. as you go. Yeah. And you're mm -hmm. out, not only that, but you're also mixing flavors together. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. One thing that I want to talk to you about when one of the recipe, traditional recipes for paella is using saffron. Saffron, yes. Remember, you saffron. see it in every recipe. You see yep. it in every recipe. Yeah. The only thing, the only reason we're not using saffron too, one is because it's too expensive right now. Yeah. It's at like $170 an we, ounce. You we, and I we looked, looked at it. Up. it. We looked it up to see. One could, ounce, could $170. Yeah. Although one ounce can go a long way. It's still $170. It's still $170. <laughs> what is our next step? By using a little turmeric. Yeah. Which it has the flavor, but it also has the, the color. color. Yes. And that's what we want. Saffron yeah. has a nice color. It's yeah. a small little plant that they're handpicked one by one certain times of the year. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so expensive. Because so. the euro 
it's yeah. ex it's higher than the dollar. Yeah. It costs more. So yeah. whenever you see that the dollar is higher than the euro, go ahead and buy a can of uh, That's saffron. That's when you buy the saffron. And that lasts you for a good long time. Mm. So. So how much of this do you want in this in this dish? Well, this does not hurt much, but we want a nice yellowish color. Yeah, and so and let me get my spoon here. And this has a very delicate uh, scent to it. It's beautiful. It's, it's mm -hmm. a nice scent. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. an Asian type seasoning. They okay. use it a lot. In okay. And and you see this, uh, you know, we pronounce this different ways. We call it turmeric. It's it's actually got an an R in there. I don't know tur turmeric. Turmeric. You, you hear some people pronounce it turmeric. So really what you're doing... I thought it was my accent. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, what you're doing is you just added enough to make it a nice yellow color. Yellow color. Okay, now do you want two of these on the chicken broth? No, we actually want four. You want four, okay. We oh, because four. you put two of those I'll in. I put two of okay. these because okay. I'm hungry. Are you hungry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm hungry. Beautiful. All right. So, so you're going to double the liquid. Double the liquid. Now, in, in this recipe that you'll see... We used low sodium chicken broth. Now, you actually brought vegetable broth this time because you just like the flavor. I just like the flavor. Yeah. But you, you could use either one. And low one. sodium vegetable broth it really does have a little more flavor than mm -hmm. the chicken. Yeah. And you've got chicken in this already. And I do. So it'll bring it both. Well, and, and but, but the key item on that broth is, is the low sodium part. If you use regular broth on this, it will be too salty, and that salt will cover up all the rest of your flavors. Perfect. You know, you see the nice color and everything? Yep. We're going to let it simmer. But there's a good way to do so, and that maybe if you have a lid to yep. go over it, yep. lower your heat okay. and let it simmer slow. So We're gonna add, Or if you don't have the lid to your pan, a nice little foil. Yep. So there again, this is, this is similar to the traditional method. We want, basically what we want the rice to do is to absorb the liquid. And so you don't want the li liquid to You don't want to, to evaporate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You want it to cook slow and just all that flavor stay inside. It goes into the rice and this is like of Exactly. So this is what we want to do. Okay. Beautiful. So we got, look, this is almost it's halfway. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. It looks great. Mm -hmm. So I got okay. my shrimp here. All right. But remember, traditional paella... I wanted to bring that up to you. Tra traditional paella has sausage in it. Yes, in fact, and it's we almost saw that like everywhere. it's almost like in New Orleans they have the gumbo: sausage, yep. chicken, shrimp, crab, yep. and all. Yeah. In a paella, you can put whatever you like. We talked yep. earlier about yep. the vegetable paella, yep. you, which you have because yep. your wife is vegetarian. Yep. So, yep. A, a nice seafood paella, a nice chicken. I mean, you just put whatever you like. Well, in and rice. so in this one, instead of using sausage, one of the ways that we made it we fit did our, pork. Yeah, we we used we did lean pork, pork instead. and they use chorizo, which is it's almost like an andouille. You right? It's almost okay. like a, a nice. Um, Dark sausage, right? You yeah, told me about yeah, well, that. Well, that's right. In fact, we saw that in Spain. In fact, I, I saw this on the the menu. And anytime you see something on the menu, at least whenever I do this, I love shrimp. Oh yeah, a little bit at a time. It's not something that you eat all the time. Yeah, but you you can you know you can use it once in a while. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna saute some shrimp, okay? We're gonna lightly saute because I do want that shrimp flavor. I got a little butter already, by the way. Thank you, Tim. I got a little butter there. All right, Tim? Okay, all right. I'm going to melt a little butter, add the shrimp. We're going to cook it like halfway because we're going to okay. finish it with the rice. Okay. The rice is halfway, yeah. I would say two-thirds ready to go. Okay. I'm going to add a little parsley. Okay. Okay, because we want the color. We want yeah. it. Parsley is always good for you, right, mm -hmm. Tim? You bet. Very good for you. Put a little bit more. How about that? So, so when, in, when we were in Spain and I saw on the recipe, uh, on the recipe, on the menu, uh, this, it, I could tell it was sausage, but I didn't know. And so I asked. Did they say the guy, a chorizo? Well, I don't remember that word. But when I asked the man, he 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 described it in his broken English as black sausage. Okay. And so this is apparently an Iberian uh, specialty that they do. Yeah, there. and you know Italians have capicola, capicola which is a, it's okay. a nice nice Italian pork sausage. It's, it's a nice little thing. Mm -hmm. And this is looking really good. Oh, so, like beautiful. I said, I like medium yeah, on you, the shrimp. You didn't cook that very long. I didn't. I didn't. I just wanted to saute it because you know what? Like I said earlier, depending on the size of shrimp that you have. Yeah. Well, and and just to give our viewers an idea on cooking shrimp, you know, you want to cook shrimp just until it's pink, huh? Just, just until yeah. Until it's just starting to turn. And pink. if you're boiling shrimp, you yeah. just as soon as the first one comes up, pull it out. Kind of cool it down because you remember. 
When you burn yourself, it hurts for a while. Yep. It's like the shrimp. It keeps cooking. So okay. you want to cool it down as much as you can. Okay. So, so we're going to go ahead and cover it just a little bit more. Put yep. the put it to medium heat and bingo, we're almost ready for it. Ooh. What do you think? I'm starting to get hungry. It's smelling good too, though. Okay. Look, Tim. Check this out, Ooh, man. Oh, beautiful. this is awesome. Okay. The recipe calls for a little tomato, a little peas and carrots. Yeah. We didn't add it because we have the recipe calls for a little thawed peas yeah. and carrots. Yeah, frozen, so what, but thawed. Yeah, yeah. Thawed. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to add a little peas and carrots, okay, Tim? Just at the end for color. Start. We still got a few more minutes left, okay? Yeah. So I want to heat this back up. Yeah. Okay. This looks good, nice. Good vegetable. So basically, basically Healthy. what you're doing is is you don't really have to cook these peas and carrots. They're, you don't. You just, just want to heat them up really nice because you want all the nutrient from all the nutrients that it has. Right? You're just you're just bringing them to room temperature. Yeah, exactly. And then we're gonna add the tomatoes. Okay. All right. Not really room temperature, but serving temperature. Serving temperature, yeah. exactly. You want to yeah. bring them hot. So, and yeah. then we're gonna sit, let it sit for just a few more minutes. Okay. All right. It's still low heat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It won't take that long, so we're gonna cover it up. That's pretty dope. It's beautiful. You know, beautiful. nice, beautiful. Okay. Okay. We're gonna cover this back up. Okay, Tim. Let me have this one. Okay. All right. Let it just kind of simmer a little bit. All right. Now let's pull the gazpacho. Oh. This is gonna nice be way chilled. too good. It's beautiful. This is way too good. Mm. Okay. I have a All little right. here. Okay. And let me tell you, this is gazpacho. It is a nice cold chill soup. It's beautiful. Look at the texture in that. Gorgeous. Okay, and you want this one? I want this one. This one? Okay. This one's really nice. And then we're gonna get our paella. Paella. Mm, look at this paella. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Color, everything. Mm -hmm. Got my spoon right here, Tim. Okay. Oh my god, this is good. You're gonna love this one. It's beautiful. Okay, that's good. Just be careful when you eat it because it's really hot. It's very hot. Look at the color in that. It's just gorgeous. And you know, by not using saffron, using turmeric gives it a nice, rich color, flavor. All right. Oh, that's so good. You know, we've had several viewers comment on the show. I wanted to mention uh, Mr. Akia Overshine. He says he watches the show all the time. Mr. Overshine, we appreciate that comment. You we do. You keep watching us. Uh, if you have comments or questions, we'll be sure and uh, uh, send them to the email that you see on the screen. Uh, we also want to tell all of our viewers from uh, from Texas to, all the to way Minnesota. Down to, to Minnesota, yes. Uh, we appreciate your comments. Just keep sending them. This is a way for us to keep the, you know, to bring your uh, input into the show. Uh, also, if you know someone who have has diabetes, you know the Polk Center here uh, help sponsor the show. Uh, they educate on diabetes, and so if you know someone who has diabetes, they may feel like their life is out of control. It's not true. Diabetes self-management training learned right here in the Polk Center can give you back control to your life. Tim, I got a question on that. Yes, yes, sir. Say, for instance, you're in Minnesota and you want to yeah. know a little bit about that. Feel free to call. You bet. Feel free to call. So or email. Is a long, e email. Email. Email, email is easy. We'll give you the information. You. Maybe they can connect you somebody bet. in Minnesota. You exactly right. Come, all these, all these towns, cities that we are, we're doing have, this for. They teach diabetes education excellent, too. Excellent. Excellent. It's just uh, an opening. We want to also thank uh, Sedexo. Hey. You know Sedexo, uh, City of Lufkin helps us to produce this awesome. show. Uh, and of course, we want to thank our sponsors at Brookshire Brothers, a celebration of. Uh, uh, food and community. Uh, thank you, Brookshires. We appreciate you sponsoring us. And you know, with all of us together and you, our viewers, we are changing the world one, one bite, bite at, at a time. time.